Yo, what is up guys? Welcome back to another video. So in today's video, I'm going to be installing more mods on my 2021 BMW S1000RR. If you guys saw my last video, I installed a fender eliminator kit and integrated taillights from TST Industries. We all know how important it is to keep your motorcycle undamaged. So a few of the mods that I'm going to be installing today is going to keep your motorcycle protected in the event of dropping your bike or accidentally low sliding. And after that, I'm gonna be installing some shorty levers on the motorcycle as well, just because I really do not like the feel of stock levers on any motorcycle. And the BMW S1000 R, even though it's not the worst, it's still not up to my standards. So here are the list of mods. So the list of mods that we're gonna be putting on the BMW S1000 R today, starting from left to right here, are spools. Simply this makes it a lot easier when you're jacking up your motorcycle for maintenance and all that stuff. And in here we have case covers. This is for the clutch, this is for the alternator, and this is for the water pump. And these are things that I find are essential on motorcycles just in case you low side. If one of these things crack on your bike, that's a big repair job and it's going to cost you a lot more money than just spending a little bit of money for that peace of mind and safety. Now moving on a little bit more to the right here, we have shorty levers. As you can see, they come stock with red, but I actually have another pair here, silver, to match the tail light of my bike, which have the silver rings as well. Over here, we have axle block sliders. This is for the rear. I actually forgot to order in a pair of front axle sliders, so it's a little bit unfortunate. I'm only gonna have some in the back, but I will get some on the front of my bike at some point in the future. And now over here, we have some tank grips or tank pads, however you want to call them. These are by tech spec. These are great grips to have on your tank. So those are the list of mods that we're going to be putting on. Thanks, Alice. So the first thing that we're going to be installing here and the easiest thing that we're going to be installing are these rear spools, which of course, like I mentioned earlier, are good for maintenance on your motorcycle if you want to jack up your motorcycle with a rear stand. And it also seconds as kind of like a crash protection, which is really good because these are really cheap and very inexpensive. So you can actually replace these uh, pretty often. So how this works is if you look over here, the way BMW designed this, there's a little bit of a lip here. We don't want to press into this, otherwise it's going to scratch up the frame here. So they kind of provide you with these spacers. So you put the bolt through first like this, and then you're going to have the spacer right here. So like so. And then just finish it off. And then of course, do the exact same thing on the other side. The next thing we'll be installing are these case covers, clutch, alternator, and water pump. And if you look here, for the clutch cover, it pretty much goes over top here. Only half of it is covered. That way you can also keep this BMW logo. And you can see that it follows the same ergonomics as the stock clutch cover, which is really nice. So for this, you're going to need a T30 Torx bit. I'm going to put it on a little socket wrench here. and start going to town. Next up on the list is the axle block sliders. Inside the box you get the sliders, you get different colored rings if you so choose to deviate away from the white, and then you get the blocks as well. And underneath, hardware, two screws. For this installation, you're gonna need the axle block slider kit from TST Industries. You're gonna need a 34 millimeter socket. And last but not least, you're gonna need a rear stand, which is why we put on these rear spools earlier. That way we can lift up the bike because we will be loosening this axle nut here. So like I said earlier, we're going to be removing the axle nut on that side. And then in turn, we're going to be removing the axle rod within. So what we're going to do, because the wheel is going to drop once we do that, we're going to just MacGyver some kind of wedge here. Use my toolboxes and this little drill bits that I have here just to kind of hold the wheel in place in preparation for me removing the axle nut and the rod. This is going to be really, really tight. So we have a breaker bar here. I'd recommend getting a breaker bar as well if you're ever taking off the axle nut. And we're just gonna position it in a way that we can give ourselves a lot of leverage, like so. 
take off the nut at the end here along with the washer. So now we're gonna push in the rod and you'll see it's pretty easy to do. This block comes out, which is what we'll be replacing on one side. And now if we go to the other side here, you'll see that the rod's sticking out. And now we could just simply pull it. And because we have these wedges in place, it's staying exactly where it needs to stay. So that means I could just put this rod back in and have no issues at all. So what you want to do now is start preparing the sliders to be put on. So we take out the sliders, put the bolt through. You don't have to tighten it in all the way right now if you don't want to. You can finish that off later. Just get it in place along with the other side. So if you look at the axle rod, you'll see that it's keyed. You'll have two flats here and two round sides here. So what we're going to do is now we're going to put the axle block slider on this side. And you see how the key fits in perfectly right there. So now we can just slide this back in. Alrighty, so now that we have the axle blocks on, now we are going to torque the axle nut, the rear axle nut, to spec. Online I read that it is 74 foot-pounds, so we're going to start adjusting this collar here to get to 74. There we go, 74 foot-pounds. So now the final step for the axle block sliders is tightening this down. I guess you could technically do it anytime you want, but I'm just saving mine for the end. And I wanna have the wording symmetrical on each side. I'm just kind of OCD like that. So the Wombat Tech Racing is gonna be on the top. So, like so. Wombat Tech Racing on the top. And done. Hey guys, Future Stan here. You know how I forgot those front axle sliders? Well, I got them in. It's about four days after I've recorded my previous install video and my OCD was really, really getting to me knowing that I had those rear axle sliders but I didn't have front ones to match. So now I'm gonna be installing them. All you gotta do is get the rod, get the screw, get the axle slider out, put the screw in the axle slider and then thread it to the rod. Stan, where the hell are the frame sliders? I thought this was a crash protection video. Well, I actually did end up buying some frame sliders. They just weren't Wama Tech. I bought these RNG crash protectors for two main reasons. Number one, they're symmetrical, meaning one of them isn't gonna be higher than the other, like these Evo Tech ones. And I'm pretty sure the Wama Tech ones are gonna be the exact same, where one is higher than the other. And number two, they stick out way more than the other frame sliders. So you get a better looking frame slider because they're symmetrical and you also get a more practical frame slider that will more likely protect your bike in the event of a fall. Alrighty, so we are at the last mod for today. These are the Shorty Levers by Womit Tech, sold by TST Industries. And I got the silver anodized adjustment levers to replace these red ones. And Alice was saying that these are like old man levers. So you said, right? Yeah. So we're gonna replace this on the brake side, as well as the clutch side, and it should be an easy install. So underneath here, there's a screw. We're just gonna loosen that up. Now we'll put the screw aside that we're gonna be using again later, and now we have no more need for this unless we decide to go back to red at some point. Now we're gonna have a brass bushing here that we're gonna be pulling out using some needle nose pliers. Comes out just like that. Once the brass bushing is out, we're going to be reusing that again, so make sure you don't lose that. This should be able to slide out like so. And underneath this piece, you have a ball and a spring. I believe we can use these ones over again. TST also has provided some extra ones as well. And now what we're going to do is we're going to push down on the ball and the spring. And then we're going to move this back and then it should just slide right in. Now we take our brass bushing, slot it inside the hole, just like that. And now we take the matching silver backing with the countersunk end, put it in the back, put the screw in, and then just tighten it down with an allen key. And there we have it. Right side done. And of course, if you wanna do the clutch side, it's the exact same process. So now we're gonna replace the levers. We're gonna do the brake side first and then the clutch side. I hear the clutch side is a little bit harder, so we're gonna save that for last. 
but let's begin with the brake side. Alrighty guys, so we just finished installing all the mods. It's midnight actually right now, so we're pretty tired. There was a couple times where something dropped into the bike and we spent like at least an hour and a half total finding two things that fell in. Alice came in super clutch. She found both things pretty quickly after I attempted to. So I just, I guess I don't have good eyes for that kind of stuff. But anyways, it's all done. We got the rear spools over here. We got the axle block sliders. And then we have the case covers for the alternator, the water pump, and then also the clutch, the front axle sliders as well. Didn't get any video footage of this, but we also have the tech spec tank grips installed. And lastly, we installed the shorty levers, brake side over here, clutch side over here. Look at that, Womit Tech, TST Industries. Is that all we installed? So now this bike is pretty much kitted out in a lot of TST things. As you saw in the last video, we also did the fender eliminator and the integrated tail lights. Nice and clean setup in the back here. Also got the license plate light, of course. And yeah, all of this stuff is from TST Industries. So if you guys are interested in getting parts for your bike, they don't only do this bike. They do pretty much all the bikes out there. They're really good, really high quality. So if you guys want to check it out, go to tstindustries.com and if you're gonna buy something, just let them know that Stan sent you. Anyways, with all that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed this Mod Day video once again. And of course, we will see you in the next video. Peace.